Okay, now let's try to implement the concept of bubble sort in the code. So we are going to use Java as a language. So if you, if you want to sort, of course you have to store the values somewhere first. So what I will do is I will create an array of integers and let me just name this as nums. And then I will assign some values. Of course I can go for this new array and then assign the value one by one, or we can give them the static values. So here, let's say we go with values six comma five comma two comma eight comma nine comma four. I don't remember the sequence in the previous video which we talked about the theory, but let's go with these values. And I want to sort them. Okay, so what I will do is even before sorting, let me print all the values. The way you can print the values of an array in Java is, you, of course you can use a normal loop or we can use enhanced for loop. So let me just use enhanced for loop here. So I will say for int num in nums, and then we can print the values, right? So we are printing num here. So I will say this is, before sorting and then I will I will do the same thing. I will execute the same code, but after sorting here. So let's say this is after sorting. Okay, now if I run this code, of course you will get the same value two times. So if I, and one more thing I will not be, I want to print this on the same line because LN will print on a new line, I don't want it. And maybe after every printing, I want to give some space as well to differentiate the values. And let me do that here as well. So that it will, it will print on the same line with spaces. Right click here and say run. And you can see uh, we got before sorting, after sorting, I think uh, this should be printed on a new line. So what I can do is just before this, I will say sort and run. Okay, so this is before sorting and this is after sorting. At this point it is not getting sorted. Of course, right, we have not written any logic here. Now this is where in between you have to write the logic for sorting. Now in bubble sort, what you do is you compare the values two values at a time and then you swap. So you compare these two values. If the first one is greater than the second one, just swap. And then likewise, you will do for all the elements. Now for sure, if you want to move to the iterations, now we have to do two loops here, the nested loop basically. The outer loop is responsible for the number of iterations or the number of passes. And the inner loop is actually responsible for swapping. So what I mean by that is I need a first variable i. We'll start from zero and where are we going to end it? So of course I can end it at less than six. So you can say six or you can say nums dot length. Okay, so basically we can use the added length. You know, the better way would be to store this value somewhere. So I can say size nums dot length. So I'm just storing that value in a variable called size. It will be easier to work with. So I will simply say size. And then I will say I plus plus. So it will go from uh, start to end. So this is only for passing, right? We have to do this multiple times. You have seen, seen that in the animations. But now let's do the inner loop, which will do the actual swapping. So here I will say int j is equal to zero because we're going to start from zero. The real question is where are we going to end it? At this point, I will say size and let's see what happens if we do the, do with size. Okay. So both the loop, the outer loop and the inner loop are starting from zero and ending at size, the size of the array. And now we have to basically compare two values. Now, how will you compare two values? Uh, and how do we even swap them? So we will check if the first value. Now, how do you know the first value? So nums of six or nums of zero, basically six is nums of zero. So nums of zero compared with nums of one, that's how you compare. Again, you can compare nums of one with nums of two, then nums of two with nums of three, then nums of three with nums of four. That means, the current number, when you say 0, 1, 2, it is represented by j. So I can say nums of j, but this will be compared with the next value. And how do I know the next value? Which is your nums of j plus 1. As simple as that. So we are comparing two values. Now how we are comparing them? Which operator we are going to use here? So we are going to use greater than. If the first value is greater than the second value, then you have to swap. Simple technique, right? Now, how do you swap? There are different ways of which you can swap the values. Uh, I'm going to use a traditional way. Let me use a temp variable. Uh, in fact, you can also declare a temp variable here. So I can say int, you know, it's better to have all the variables on top. So I will say int temp equal to zero initially. And then using the third variable, I can simply swap them. So I can say temp is equal to nums of j. And then nums of j is equal to nums of j plus one. And then nums of 
j plus 1 is equal to 10. So basically what we are doing is with these three lines, we are just swapping them. Nothing complex, just swapping the two values. Okay. And that's what we have done here. So every time you find this, the first value, greater than the second value, just swap them. And you do this multiple times because we are keeping this in a loop. And that's it. The sorting is done. Uh, since it will be happening multiple times, it will make sure that you keep the values at the end, the bigger value at the end after each iteration. So if you run this, okay, we got an error. It says out of bound. Now there's one problem here. Don't you think when we are going for J plus one, what about the last value? So we need to make sure that we don't go to the last value. So it should end minus one, right? Uh, because when you're comparing the last two values, the value for J will be here and this will be J plus one. So we have to make sure that your J ends before the last value. That was the error and run. And you can see sorting done and you got the sorted values. This is, this is how basically you sort them. Again, we have seen this explanation in theory, how things are working out. But here we just try to sort it with the help of this logic. Now there's one problem here. Uh, every time you do this in the animation, if you remember, Every, after every pass, we don't have to go for the, all the values because the last value is sorted. In the next pass, two values are sorted. In the next pass, three values are sorted. So we don't have to sort them again or even check them again. So here, J should be not going to size minus one. In fact, it should go size minus I minus one. It's because after every iteration, so let's say we have the first iteration where I is zero, it will go till the second, val second last value because we are saying minus one. In the second iteration where the i value will be one, it will go till the second last position or third last position because the last value is sorted. You don't have to check that. Again, it will not affect the output, but it will affect the speed because we are saving some time by not checking the same sorted value again and again. Okay, that's how you basically you do it. In fact, if you want, what we can also do is we can print this in every iteration. So I can just copy this. And after every iteration of the outer loop, we can print the values and see what is happening there, right? So in fact, I will also print a new line here so that it will come on new line. Let's run this. So this, this is what basically is happening. Initially you have this value and then this is where the sorting starts. If you can see after the first iteration, the biggest value nine just went till the end. Then after the next, for the next iteration, the biggest value, which is uh, eight is at the end or second biggest value. Third iteration, we got three values sorted. Fourth iteration, we got four values sorted. Fifth iteration, we got four values sorted or five values sorted. And last iteration, we got all the value sorted. So that's how basically it does. Of course, here too, we got at the start itself. We don't have to sort them again, but that's how algorithm works, right? How will you even check if the array is sorted even before you compare all the values? So that's the thing about the bubble sort where you compare the values, swap them, and you're done. So yeah, that's about this particular video where we have done the coding for bubble sort.